there's a new object in the morning sky, the king of the planets, Jupiter. It's so exciting, Jupiter is such a dynamic world. It rotates so quickly. If you get bored on Jupiter, just wait an hour. Now the problem is dawn is so early at this time of year, I'm having to get up early at stupid o'clock to observe before the sky gets too bright. So good morning, it's nearly three o'clock. Jupiter's nice and high in the sky. I've set the telescope up. And although I am absolutely far from asleep, I'm actually quite excited to go outside and see the king of the planet. Um, I've set it up already the great red spots visible at the moment and we've got Ganymede which is one of the bigger moons is just reappearing from the far side of Jupiter so it's going to take a while I've made my cup of tea. So the process I'm going to use is called lucky imaging which is where we rely on capturing a video of Jupiter and then use free software to reject the blurry images that have been distorted and then again using free software to stack the sharp ones and process them to reveal details, fine details, on the Jovian surface. And I'm going to use this high-speed planetary camera to record Jupiter for two minutes at around 100 frames per second. So we've started capturing video files. Now I'm going to capture a whole load of two-minute video files. I've got my cup of tea, and it's literally a case of letting the software do the work while looking at the beauty of the picture on the screen. Obviously some mist or something around Jupiter seems to be sort of flickering in the mist and having to keep adjusting the settings. Which is something low down on the horizon. That's what we like in addition to the good seeing is shooting planets when they're high in the sky. Oh, this is so annoying. There's a bank of cloud or mist or something down on the horizon. Jupiter's brightness is fluctuating as this cloud drifts back and forth. So I think I'm just gonna have to wait it out for a bit and Hope that Jupiter climbs a bit higher and uh, clears the mist. So, most frustratingly, after only a few video captures, Jupiter has actually disappeared. So I'm just taking the time just to stack. If that's coming through at all, there we go. I'm just going to take the time to stack the images using the software and just hope that at least one or two of them have come through. So, I'm going to back up now. It's now about four in the morning. As you can hear the birds all up, the sky is now blue. You can just see Jupiter above the telescope now. So, definitely time to pack up, have a few hours kip, and then get on with some video processing. So, good morning again. I've had a few hours sleep. I've had a shower, so I'm feeling a little bit more human now. And I've just realised I've never actually described my setup. So here is my telescope. It's a C11 on an EQ6, which I bought secondhand from one of our fellow club members. And it lives, well for Jupiter anyway, it's living on this homemade trolley. And that means I can move it around the garden and dodge the trees to see the low Jupiter. It's going to win no prizes for workmanship, but it seems to do the trick. So observing the planets is all about high resolution. So I have a times two Barlow. And to counter use that, I have a motorized focuser, which is worth its weight in gold, which means I have hands-free focusing. And then I also have the Wi-Fi dongle hanging down in the center, which means that with the Wi-Fi, I can control the mount and with the focuser hanging off the cable, I've then got hands-free control of the telescope. We've also got an atmospheric dispersion corrector which helps give a clearer image of the light coming through the atmosphere. And I've also got this very useful device, a flip mirror, and there's an eyepiece that fits in there. And inside there is a little mirror. And if I move that lever, that then puts a mirror into the light path up to the eyepiece, or you lift it out of the way, and the light then travels all the way through down to the camera at the end. And that is an ASI 224 one-shot colour camera. 
So let's have a look at the videos. This is the software tool I use for the stacking. This short sorts them all out, all the frames out into sharpness order. And then I can use that then to put all the good ones together and reject the blurry ones. But to be honest, they've all suffered with this cloud. They're, they're, none of them are particularly good. There's details are visible, but they're all grainy. There's, there's no great shakes. And I think this one's going to be the best one. Um, and this is how it looks after the sharpening process. So again, it's not going to win any prizes, but you know, I've got to remind myself that this is the details visible on the planet Jupiter with a second hand telescope from a garden in England. And you know, we can see details around the great red spot. We can see some cloud formations as well on Jupiter through cloud. So I guess my positive is that the process works. I can pull out details on a distant planet. I can resolve the disk of Ganymede. So it's boding well for the Jupiter opposition for the rest of this year. So fingers crossed. What I will do, I'll put together a, another video. I'll go a bit more geeky, get more into details of the imaging process. That shows the process I follow then to go all the way through the setup, through the capture and then processing as well. Right, stay safe and say if you did enjoy the video, please do subscribe. And I look forward to bringing you more videos as we explore the night sky.